Welcome back. Here's one of the Fuller Brush Company port light windows that we're going to be putting into the Monterey. We have eight of them that we need to replace, and where we're going to begin on the project is we have to take the old frames out. We'll try cutting them. We're going to have to chip, literally, kind of piece by piece, get these frames out. We're also going to have to get the old thickened epoxy that they use as kind of a filler in between the opening, the wood frame opening on the hull, and the actual plastic frame on the old port light. Uh, a couple of areas, the gap was so large that actually a couple of the screws were going in there. Okay, we're going to need to grind all that out. We're going to have to prep the area. We're going to have to dry fit in all our new fuller brush port lights. Now, before we put them in, what I want to do is I want to remove all the hardware. I want to remove the lens. I want to protect it from any type of glue or from getting scratched when we do the installation. I also want to protect the frame itself, or at least the visible part of the frame that we're going to be seeing on the inside of the boat. That's what the masking tape here is for. We're going to be covering a good section of this frame. Now, to get the best bond, both mechanically as well as chemically, on this part of the frame, I want to use some 80-grit sandpaper. We'll wipe it up with some solvent. We're ready to put it in. But it's sometimes challenging to get glue to stick to different types of material. Maybe you're trying to put a piece of aluminum up to something plastic, or maybe you're trying to put something plastic up to wood, like an arm tape, okay? Not every glue works the same. And that leads us to our next expert guest. This is Ben Gujan. Hi, Ben. Hi, John. Ben is with Gujan Brothers, and they are the makers of West System Epoxy. This is a huge product in boat building as well as repairs. And this is the core. This is the 105 resin, okay? And I see that we have different types of hardeners or catalysts here. This particular one here, Ben, is 205. What region of the country, what temperature can you work with 205? Yeah, 205 is our fast hardener, John. You want to use that in cooler climates um, or in conditions where you don't need a lot of open time. Okay, temperature range? Yeah, it's anywhere 55 to 75 degrees, I would say. It's a little bit hotter down here in South Florida, and this is a pretty big project. Mm -hmm. I might want to have a little bit more working time than 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. What should I use? If you need more time, John, we have a slow hardener is 206. This is good in, in warmer climates where the epoxy is going to cure a little bit faster. What about for guys that are in the tropics? You know, we have a lot of viewers in the Caribbean. We have a lot of viewers down in the Keys. It's hot. It's humid. And you really don't want this product to kick off too fast because then you can't work with it anymore. Do you have a really slow cure type of hardener? Yeah, we do, John. It's 209 is our extra slow hardener. This is used in any kind of tropical climates or when it's very warm or in jobs where you need a lot of a long open time. Now, could I use the 105 resin or one particular type of resin or a hardener for this project, or might there be a better choice? Yeah, John, this system would work, but for this particular job, I would recommend a G-Flex. G-Flex is a structural epoxy we have that's somewhat flexible, is designed to bond dissimilar materials together, be perfect for this plastic. Yeah, um, it sounds like it sounds like it. Here, here's my challenge, Ben. These port lights are actually kind of mounted into the area of the boat on the Monterey. We have a bow flare. It kind of, it kind of, you know, comes up at a weird angle. So they're literally going to be kind of hanged in a suspended type of fashion. And I don't want any material oozing out from the open. We have spent a lot of prep time getting this thing ready for paint. And I don't want it to resand the boat. I need something that's really going to be thick, that's going to hold, and I don't want it to sag. What? might I do to any type of epoxy to thicken it up? Well, that's where our fillers come in, John. We have um, a line of fillers here. For this job, I would recommend uh, 406 colloidal silica to mix with the G-Flex. Um, you'll get the strong bond that you need. So we can fold this into the G-Flex and it's gonna make it even thicker yet. Yes. Now we can use this for the structural part of the repair bin. And once we trial the material onto our frame, okay, the thickened material, We'll slide it through the boat, and on the outside of the boat, I really want to smash it into the gap that we have so that we have everything kind of in place. We're also going to have to run in a couple of screws, and we're going to use that as a temporary clamp to kind of get everything to set really nice on the inside of the boat. But we're going to have to let that kind of cure, and then I want to make some type of a fairing compound to blend everything on the outside of the boat. And what we're going to do is real quick take a very short time out, but when we come back, I'm going to show you what to use for a fairing compound, something that you want to sand 
We'll cover it right after this. The West system epoxy is always one to one with the pumps, right? Correct. The pumps are already calibrated. Hey, welcome back. We again have the privilege of having Ben Gushan on the program from Gushan Brothers, and we're mixing up some resin, and we want to thicken this so that we have some type of fairing compound embed the outside perimeter of the window frames into the wood boat hull. Now, good thing we're inside the boat shop because it's raining. I don't know if you can hear that. And before the break, we were talking about this product right here. This is called the 406. It's colloidal silica. It is very strong, gives great strength as a thickening agent for epoxy or anything like that. But the downside of this is it's not easily sandable. It's really, really challenging to sand. We want to make some type of a fillet around the outside perimeter of our port lights so that we can blend the boat and kind of hide, minimize those window openings. And that kind of leads to fairing compounds that are easily sandable. What do we have right here, Ben? Sure. Here is, John, is our low-density filler, and this is our microlite fairing filler. These are both uh, fairing compounds, both fairly easy to sand. Okay, Today, so I think we'll use 407. This is called 407. And, and, and this is what type of density are you calling this? It's a low density fairing filler. What does that mean? Uh, it means that it's used in light structural applications, John, but it's very easy to sand. Okay. Now, microscopically, you know, a lot of these fillers that are easily sandable have what's called microspheres. Is, is that what this has here, Ben? Yes. Now, notice the color, okay? The guys kind of really complain whenever they're working with that red all fair or anything like that, you know, for, for the boat, that they have to spot prime a lot. They gotta put a lot of primer over top of it to cover the red color of all fair. Okay, this is a pretty dark color too. Is there anything that you guys make to where you can really minimize the amount of priming that I'm gonna have to do when I'm working with the fairing compound? Yeah, John, we make uh, pigments, uh, white pigment into gray pigment. So I could add some white pigment into this, and this is going to minimize my, my spot priming. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Ben, we've got a couple of people that we need to thank, including yourself and everybody back at the shop at Gujon Brothers. Thank you so much for coming down here Anytime, to the floor. John. Hey, we also had Doc tip here. I've got everything mixed up. I'll take it over to the boat, and with this applicator, we'll go ahead and put 45 on the window frame right to the boat hull. We'll drag the material all the way around 360 degrees. We'll let it kick overnight, we'll sand it, we'll prime it. I'm John Graviscus. We'll see you next time.